praying for the peace of our city. Um, I was just thinking about the early service, the, the children's service, and the fact that it sounded like I came in on the last song, and it sounded like you guys were having such a party. Uh, they were bouncing, and there was hats, and there was fancy uh, dasa, and all sorts of things that were going on. People were really just having a party with the kids. Uh, even the old people seemed to be enjoying themselves. I think they were just being revived in their, their youthfulness, you know? Amen. Um, but uh, what came to me and what I've been thinking about is we as adults need to set the example for our kids. We need to tell them why we have hope. We need to tell them why we, uh, why we are excited about the Lord. And I mean, there is so much to be negative about. Let's be honest. Um, I'm, I'm one of those glass half full type of people. So I will see the positive before I see the negative. But now you might be wired differently to me. You might see the negative before you see the positive. You say, yeah, the glass is half empty. This is a bad situation. I mean, uh, we're going to probably have load shedding in the next uh, five minutes. So that's fine. You know? um, so if you don't see the, 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 the overheads, that's also fine. And if I talk loudly, that's also fine. But we can choose whether we want to see the glass half full or half empty. Do we want to down what bank of Malachini all the time? Or do we want to lift it up to God in prayer? Yes, amen. amen. And that's my challenge to us this morning. That's what we must try and what, pass on to our kids. Our kids can grow up hating the city, yes. hating this place because we hate it. Or they can grow up loving this place and, uh, and blessing it because we bless it. And so it's, it's actually what we as parents, what we as adults, show as an example. So if you turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 29, and verse 4 through 7, um, that's where I'm going to start, but I want to just quote this verse from James. James chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, The fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And my grandson is giving us the yes, yes over there. Amen. Amen. Um, it's one of those words he knows. Amen. Uh, so, um, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so the fervent prayers of a righteous lady or man availeth much. We need to be praying. We need to be availing. It's sort of the old King James way of saying it. You know, be strong. Carry on praying. Don't give it up. And then I want to go over to this verse, these verses in Jeremiah chapter 29. It is up front there, but it's, it might not be too clear because it's in red on a funny background. The funny background is the picture we actually see across the dam here. That are similar to this. It says, um, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to those I carried into exile from, Babylon, uh, from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now this is, a bit of background is, the people of Judea were carried into exile, they were taken into Babylon, against their will. They were put in a land they didn't want to be in, in a place with people they didn't want to be with. Does that sound like Whitbunk? <laughs> a place where you don't want to be with people you don't want to necessarily be with. But what does God tell them to do here when they're in that city, when they're in that place? Pray for that city. Because if it prospers, you will prosper. If it thrives, you will thrive. Um, I'm in business and we pray we pray almost every morning together as a staff. And often we will pray for our clients, our um, clients that we deal with, owners, uh, tenants, and, and the, the contractors that we work with. And the thing is, if they are being paid by the contracts that they are doing, then they're able to pay us. So if they are thriving, we are thriving. If they're not being paid, we're not being paid. It's, 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 it's that chain circle that, that goes through life. It goes through any city. 
And in the city, we've got a lot of interesting things. I was thinking about Pretoria is our capital city. It's known for being the seat of the government of South Africa. Joburg is known for being the seat of wealth because of all the gold mines there. What is Malachleni in Whitbank, Middleburg, the high felt known for? It's the seat of power. It's the seat of power. Not always on, but it's, it's the seat of power. I was reading something not too long ago how they talked about our network of, um, of power stations in this area, and they called it the backbone of South Africa's industry. Now, that backbone seems to be taking a bit of strain. I think it ran the comrades or something. I don't know. Um, we, we're having th three hours on, two hours off kind of thing at the moment. But can we pray for our backbone? Can we pray for the city? Can we pray for our environment? Can we lift up the city and lift up what we need and what we see as our needs? We might pray for the world. How many of you prayed during COVID-19 that the Lord would end COVID-19? Let's see a show of hands. I think every one of you at some point or another prayed that the Lord would stop COVID-19, that we would be delivered from this thing. The 17th of November, just Thursday, was three years since they announced they found a bug, but they don't know what it is yet. They found it in Wuhan. Three years later, um, I looked at the date for when we, Whitbank or South Africa was closed, uh, was stopped. We, we stopped being uh, in July, the 23rd of July, I think it was with Joe. Um, all of our restrictions were lifted. And I, I don't know if any of us want to look back through those two years. Today you're allowed to wear a mask. No, you had to wear a mask all the time. Um, today you're allowed to be together in groups of two. Tomorrow you're allowed in groups of ten. Next week you're allowed in groups of fifty. And then it just changed. I don't think any of us want to go back there. So we prayed. I know you prayed. We all prayed, God help us get out of this situation. And I think it wasn't just a local thing. It wasn't just a national thing. So it was an international prayer that was happening. God deliver us from this COVID. Now you might know people that might have died from COVID. I had COVID myself. I was sick. I don't want to relive that for anybody, any purposes. But God delivered me out of that. I'm still hearing the occasional story of somebody's got COVID. But God delivered us out of it. And He's carried us through. So if we will just join our prayers together for our city, that's what I want to encourage us for this morning. Join in your prayers together for our city. The old name, the monk. At me, it was derived from a white bank, a big bank, a white bank of stones that meant there was coal under the ground. That is how that is actually in, in the uh, in Kua. They first saw this white bank of stones and it, and it indicated that there was coal under the ground. It's, it's something that pushes up and shows them there's coal. In Malathleni, the new name means black stones, black coal, the coal is what our city is named after. Whether in the old name or the new name, we are named after the coal that we thrive on. This thing that we pull out of the ground. Some of you are in the mining industry, some of you might work for Eskom. Um, we pull this, this, this in coal, this, in the, the coal out of the ground. We burn it, we turn it into power, which feeds the nation most of the time. Most of the time. And if we're honest, we actually took it for granted. For years now, we've taken that power for granted. We haven't even prayed for Eskin too much. I know I'm guilty of it, so I'm going to stop praying a bit more for Eskin. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> uh, in Psalm 122, verse 6, um, and I'm, I, I use... I don't know if you've heard me preach before. I've actually seen the parallel between the Psalms and, and the year we're in. So Psalm 122 has something to do with the year 2022. So verse 6 through 9, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For those who love you, be secure. 
May those, uh, may there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I, I will seek your prosperity. Now this was a specific prayer that was prayed by the, the Jewish people for Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem means the Lord is peace. So when you're saying, when you're praying for Jerusalem, you're praying, Lord, let there be peace in Jerusalem. The Lord is peace over the Lord is peace. The Lord's peace rule over the Lord's peace. And so it was like there was this play on words that the, that the writer was giving you. Let there be peace in the city of peace. But now we understand that our Jerusalem, we can, and we must pray for the physical Jerusalem up in Israel. Keep praying for it because these promises apply to the physical Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem because if Jerusalem is at peace, the whole Middle East is at peace. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, so continue to pray for the physical, real Jerusalem and Israel, God's people. But from there, we, we learn a principle. We learn this principle that we can be praying for our Jerusalem. We might have been sent away from um, the city we might love. You might have come from the coast. You might have come from who knows where. But you've been planted here for a time in this city. Pray for the peace of this city while you're here. Pray for the backbone of the power system of our country. I remember catching a flight down to um, PE the one year, and I ended up sitting next to a guy that works for works for Eskim, or he was a contractor to Eskim. And I started chatting to him about the network, and he was involved with these big uh, turbo uh, wind turbines that are catching power from the windy part of the city, the windy parts of the world, uh, of South Africa. And he was actually excited at the time about the Eskim network. He said Eskim is one of the best networks in the world. Actually, other countries came to study our network so that they could find out how to do it. We might not know this, but it is actually still one of the best networks in the world. If we're catching power from the wind turbines or the solar power in the Karoo or our old backbone, backbone's getting a bit tired, we are still catching power to a brilliant network that was set up in this nation. Now there's a million and probably 20 million reasons why things have gone wrong. And maybe some of you are much more clued up than I am about what those things are. But can we pray, rather than look at the glass half empty, can we start praying for Eskim, that there will be godly men and women in charge, that will be able to look after these things, look after our cities. Because if the powerhouse of Whitbank, of Malchleni, Middleburg, Highfeld, is strong again, the whole nation is strong. Think about your business, whatever you're in. When the power's out, then you're running a generator, or you've got no power because you haven't got a generator. It's affecting business. It's affecting what's happening. So yes, even if we don't have anything to do with Eskim, we are a receiver of that power. We're receiving something from them. Now, I don't know how I'm getting so heavily into Eskim, but bear with me. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of our city. That the Lord's peace would rest here. I looked at this word peace. And it means, uh, the Hebrew word is shalom. It means peace, prosperity. It, the the vines mean, uh, it means peace, completeness, welfare, health, well-being, at ease, unconcerned, unharmed, to be whole. I'm not sure if I've got it as my next. There it is. Um, completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, completeness. In, in number, safety and soundness in body, welfare, health, prosperity. Peace, quiet, tranquility, contentment, peace in our friendships, our human relationships, peace with God, especially in our covenant relationship with Him, and then peace from war, and peace as an adjective, as, a, as an active thing that's happening. We need this kind of peace. We need to come, kind of pray that kind of peace over our city. 
we need to be praying that kind of peace over the backbone of our country's power system. We need to be praying soundness, welfare, goodness, safety, soundness. And it, and it extends beyond just our physical peace. It extends into the spiritual elements. It extends into our relationships. It extends into our city. Just imagine... Just imagine if every person in the wet bank, in Malas Lady, is being well paid for all the contracts they've ever done. And they're paying the next person well for the, all the contracts they've, been, they've, they've, they've done. And they're paying the next person and the next person. Just imagine the wealth. Do you see how it's a, it's a chain link? There's this chain that happens between the links of every kind of business. I'm involved in a kind of business that links to a lot of different things, but in small ways. You might be involved in one particular business that only deals with one client. But it's a chain reaction. If that client isn't being paid, you aren't being paid, and you can't pay your contractors. You can't pay the next person in the chain. And so it goes on and on. So we want to pray this kind of peace, this kind of shalom, completeness, soundness, welfare into our city of Malachlini. Whether the black hole is on top of the ground or the white band of rocks is showing that there's coal under the ground. Whichever way you want to say, Bitbonk, Emalachleni, we are still the one that we need to be. We need to be praying for this city. We need to be praying that there's peace here, security inside our city. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I say peace within you. And this is where it for my brothers and my friends, I'm praying for the peace of the city so that it will be well for not just me, it's well for my family, it's well for my friends. Every one of us benefits from that kind of prayer. For the sake of the house of the Lord, we seek its prosperity. And we might not have a big temple, but we've got this building. And we are one part of the kingdom of God in the city. Rudolf was saying recently how we might be a thousand, just over a thousand members in this congregation. But are we affecting a city of over 400,000? Are we being affected? Now there are many churches in the city and each one is affecting different people. But there is still people out there that need God. And if we will pray for our brothers, if we will start praying for our brothers and sisters, if we really love them, we will pray for them. William Law said, there is nothing that makes us love a man so much as praying for him. There is nothing that will make us love a man more than if we stop praying for him. Have you ever noticed that your worst enemy, Jesus tells us those hard things like pray for your enemies. So now we have to take Jesus at his word and start doing that. You stop praying, Lord, bless that man, bless that man, that boss. I'm, I'm a boss. I hope my people are praying for me. Lord, bless that man, bless that man. Um, help him. Lord, bless him, bless his family, bless his relationships. Help him get through whatever he's going through. If, if we would start praying for our bosses, if we start praying for the people around us, and start praying for God's blessing, we will see this thing chain link upwards. The blessings continue to grow outwards as well. How am I doing for time? I'm over time here. Okay. I want to turn to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. And just hit some, some highlights. It's a sermon that I preached not, not well, some time ago now. But um, some acts that we need to pray prophetically into our city. And um, when God called Jeremiah, he gave him this instruction. He said, See today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Now there's some actions that are, are, are God is telling Jeremiah, he's got you. And, he, and if you actually read the whole book of Jeremiah, you'll pick out, he ministers to nations, he ministers to kings, he ministers to a bunch of people over the whole course of his ministry. But these things have to continue right through his ministry. It says there, I appoint you to uproot, 
to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. There's six things mentioned here. And when we pray, we can pray specifically into a situation. To uproot, the first task he says there is to uproot, to root out. If you take something and you pull it out by the roots, it's going to be gone. So we need to know spiritually what we are praying about. We need to know, be led by the Holy Spirit, to say, Lord, how do I pray into this situation? And maybe we need that for Eskim. And I'm sorry I'm picking on Eskim. If you work for them, the Lord bless you. Um, but maybe we need to be praying, Lord, reveal to me what needs to be rooted out so that your glory can be seen in Eskim again, that this background can be strong. So we need to be asking the Holy Spirit, what, what do we need? What is the root? What is that thing underneath that needs to come out? We're famous, famous. The Pong is famous. We had first deep coal mines. Now they just move the sand apart. They pull the coal out. They put the sand back again. They put out what is the root, so that it can be exposed and be useful. We need to be asking God, what is the root that needs to come out here? The next one is tear or pull down. When you tear something down or you pull it down. Um, this can relate to strongholds, where we need to pull down what is in opposition to what God is doing. We need to start pulling down in prayer what God, uh, uh, what is of the devil, and lifting up what God is doing. So we need to pull down what opposes God, whether it's um, whether that man just needs a transfer to another department, or he needs God. We need to pull down what is the stronghold in his life. We need to pull down those sort of things. To destroy. This woman had a fun time destroying that pot. Um, to destroy means uh, to end completely. And so when we destroy the attacks of the enemy, we end them completely. And I think there's, a, there's a, an attack on, the, on the us, on our nation. We've come through COVID, it's hit us. Financially, as a whole nation, it's hit the whole world. There's been a recession in the whole world. Then there's a war in Ukraine, and this causes the petrol prices to go through the roof, and because Russia supplies a lot of the oil and petrol to the world, so because of sanctions, now there's no, no oil. We need to maybe be praying, yes, for our nation, but to destroy what is being done by the devil. Task number four, to overthrow or to throw down. We can literally overthrow in prayer what the devil is doing. We can throw it down, we can bring it down. This word to throw is actually interesting, it's the name Jeremiah means to throw out. Sure. Jeremiah means to take and to throw him out into the world. And sometimes the answer to our prayers is not always, Lord, throw that thing down, but Lord, who can be thrown out? Yeah into the world to bring an answer to that prayer. Who can be brought into a place that will answer this prayer? So sometimes we need to be thrown out there to answer God's prayer. Sometimes we are the answer. In fact, the same word is used in the Greek when, God, when Jesus cast out demons, it was to throw those demons out. To throw them out. And sometimes we are found in that place where we need to be thrown out ourselves in answer to the harvest or throw down what is against God. To build. That looks familiar. Also a South African footprint, I think it looks looks like something we, we've seen all, uh, regularly. But to build, we've been doing it here. We've built the first part of what God wants to build in this particular congregation. There's the next part that's going to slip in just behind you. It's going to be easy. Yes, amen. 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 Let's, let's <laughs> preach it, brother. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be quick. It's going to be, be quick. quick and easy. It's going to be quick, January. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's finished in January or something's happening in January. But something's happening in January. Okay. Um, but to build, we've had all these things that God says we must break down, uproot, overthrow. And then He says, beyond that, build. Build strong again. 
When you've broken down with, against God, we need to build what is of God. And we need to build this thing strong. And I would like to say to us English guys and ladies, let's build the English congregation side of the uh, English service part of the congregation again. We put on near doctor. Let's build this thing. Yes. Let's let's make the, the second service bigger than the first service that they had to put us first. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, wouldn't that be awesome? Okay. I don't know if I'm speaking prophetically or not, but uh, I won't say. Um, and then to plant. Sometimes we uproot those weeds, but we need to plant what is good of God. And I don't know, I'm not a gardener. If anybody plants something in my house, it's my wife. Um, she knows whether it will work there or not. When I plant a tree, I look at it, it's this size, and I think, Nehemiah is too far away from the wall, it should have been closer. And she says, no, when that thing's big, it's going to be growing over the wall. And that's what we need to be doing, planting seeds that will grow over the walls of what we expect. Let's plant a seed in the English part of the congregation that will flow into the Afrikaans congregation, that will flow into every nation and tribe and tongue of a Yes. That we are not here just for ourselves. Let's plant what God wants in the city. Let's plant something good for God. And near Doxa, I mean, they were planted... I wasn't part of the congregation back then, but they were going to downtown when that was town. That was the edge of town. The, the moth cottage, the moth club was there, and this was the place to happen. It was the golf club. It was the biggest part of town when they were planted. Now we're on the edge of the eastern side of town, and this is, seems to be the new golf club. I think we can link to a golf club. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's something. I don't know. I haven't thought of it before. But. God wants to use it near Doxa for a reason. God wants to plant and wants to build something new in and through us. And English guys, let's build, let's build, let's plant. Okay, so that's me, short and sweet. Not so, not so short, sorry, you went off for 20 minutes, we've gone over. Um, you were joking, okay, I'm trying to keep myself under control here. In Matthew 18 and verse 19 through 20, Jesus says this, and it's in the context, it's his relationship. But he says, again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, that, that you ask for hello, my lovey, how are you, baby boy? How are you? This is my grandson, Calvin. He's come to visit us. <laughs> it says, if any of you agree and ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For what two or three of you come together in my name, there I am with them. And where you are, sit with the two or the three next year. Let's pray for a Let's not just talk about it this morning. Let's give ourselves a few minutes to actually pray for our city. So you've got some things here. You can overthrow, you can plant, you can trust God for something new. And let's pray for, for an Esther. Let's do that together. So turn around to somebody near you and pray together. Amen.